So we just got done watching the movie Air. We figured that it's kind of applicable to this channel since most of the stuff that we review here happens to be Air Jordans and the like. So with that being said, there will be spoilers. If you have not seen the movie and you care about spoilers, don't watch this, at least not right now. All right, so first things first, I have a huge list of notes. I'm going to run through them fairly quickly or fairly quickly for me. <laughs> And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to bring Mrs. Wing over here because then we're just going to have dialogue and we're just going to talk about the movie and what each of us thought about it. My first initial thoughts, if it's just a straight up thumbs up, thumbs down world, I definitely give it two thumbs up. But if you want me to emphasize on any of my feelings, I love the movie, man. Like as soon as we, we got out of the theater, what happened? I asked if you liked the movie. And what did I say? You almost cried. Three times. And then she said, why? No, I laughed. And then I said, why? And you said, because it's so good. At the very end of my list, I have a little note that says, this is my adult version of what Space Jam was to me as a kid. The whole movie Space Jam isn't a great movie or anything like that, but that first 15 minutes, 10 minutes maybe, maybe it was even less than that, felt like a long time as a kid. But the intro to that movie where you're with a little young Mike and he's shooting hoops outside and he talks about all of his dreams and then all of a sudden it fast forwards into the intro and you got that cool ass music and all the cool highlights and chills just thinking about it. So the way that I felt about that is the way that I feel about this, but just as an adult, this is kind of like my version of Space Jam or that feeling, but as an old man. The intro, I don't know if you felt about like this, but like the thing that struck me the first, like as soon as it started rolling was like, this kind of feels like one of our YouTube videos. Aw, shucks. It was very much a love letter to the 80s is what I felt like. My next thought was something that I think is very interesting, especially because they still joke around about this stuff today up in Beaverton and in New York and things like that. But basically Beaverton was a joke. And I don't mean that in a rude way. It's just as a, in a business sense for a footwear company at the time in the 80s to be stationed or headquartered in Beaverton or Portland or Oregon or whatever on the West Coast. It literally was a joke. You had everybody over there on the East Coast. You have New Balance, Converse, Puma, all of them are on the East Coast. They all originated over there. You know, America started over there. So that's where a lot of these old brands started from. Like you got these brands that are like over hundred years old. And again, it started on the East Coast. So having something over on the West Coast, especially in Beaverton at the time was looked at as a joke. And it's just funny cause not anymore. We've got uh, Adidas headquartered in both Germany and Portland, which is really interesting. That all happened cause of Nike. We even have Under Armour now with a footwear design place or space in that area too so it's just really really interesting the way that that kind of like perception of the location really changed because of one company something that i thought was really interesting maybe I'll, I'll take a side note real quick everybody that was in the movie as far as like an actor goes was phenomenal i have zero complaints on any of the portrayals of anyone viola davis is a boss she wasn't even in the movie a lot but the, every time she's in there i'm like whoa like she felt like your mom like not your mom but like, you know <laughs> i was what like I mean? my mom <laughs> so but she felt like a mom like it wasn't like some lame portrayal like she was serious and so like it was it was just really really cool you felt the love and the care that she has for her child and and her child's future ben affleck i love that guy i i, I still stand by daredevil especially the director's cut yes the the seesaw scene was awful but still it was a fun movie but i I will say that just from the trailers, Affleck's character or portrayal of the person, the real human, Phil Knight, that was to me what looked like was going to be the weak link. Not because I don't think he's a good actor. Like I said, I still love the guy in, in Daredevil. He's a great Batman. Wish he was still Batman, but hey, whatever. But basically, uh, once I sat down and like his portrayals or his scene was like, you know, all of his scenes were just being like acted out, like all of that stuff kind of went out the window. The dude kicks ass. And he directed the film. He did a stand up job. Everything from the way that the scenes were filmed to the way that they were edited to even the visual look of it like nothing looked perfect it looked like it was literally in the 80s like it was like not like filtered but even though it was but like it just looked good it looked like it was filmed on film and not digital one of the things that brings me to you know his portrayal of Phil Knight is that in the movie there's a scene between him and uh, Matt Damon and, and you know his character or it's weird to call them characters because they're real people but Sonny Ficaro, uh they were talking and he was basically giving him the pitch of like, I want to sign Michael Jordan and stuff like that. And all 
Phil Knight was worried about. And this is back in the 80s. This is something I complain about all the time reviewing their products. He was so just worried and concerned about shareholders and what shareholders think that he like removed all passion from the equation. As somebody that reviews this brand's products, I love this brand to death, not because of the brand itself, because of the person that they put in place, which is kind of what the whole movie was about. To see that the brand still has issues, and I'm talking about like major issues, balancing passion and what shareholders want, passion and business, I guess. And in my opinion, I think that they're kind of like failing currently so maybe it's because they don't have somebody like a sonny there who like thrives off of passion you know what i mean like he seemed to have at least the way that he was portrayed i don't know the guy personally but the way that he was portrayed it, it looked like or felt like that he ran his whole everything off of passion his mind wasn't business oriented in the sense of like a phil knight where like he's looking at numbers and shareholders and units sold and stuff like that this guy was like no this is the dude like he's gonna save the company yada 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 and so it was really interesting to see that even back then they had this problem of balancing business and passion now i don't know the actor's name i don't know all of these people i'm not a big like hollywood person or anything like that i don't follow celebrities and all i really don't care but anyways whoever was playing david falk which is mj's uh, agent the conversation that he had with sonny Pacero was hilarious after sonny went to speak with jordan's parents in north carolina that was one of the funniest things and and one of the things that you had brought up right in the beginning was this movie's rated r he was just like why is there going to be nudity or whatever i was like probably not and then i said oh are they going to a strip club at some point oh yeah that's what she and i was like i don't know and and then basically what it was is that they were just dropping f-bombs every other word so i just really liked that but basically if you guys don't know you're only allotted a certain amount of f-bombs in a movie and if you exceed that your movie's automatically rated r even if there's no nudity no drug use no violence you can have like an epically violent movie as long as you don't show blood or use f word it's weird and it'll still be pg-13 the soundtrack obviously excellent it was all 80s everything i loved it the guy that plays peter moore i know that i already talked about the portrayal of all of these people and stuff like that but i gotta say i don't know who that guy is either but he was amazing like he was just probably one of my favorite people besides matt damon's sunny character and viola davis's mrs jordan uh, i just think that those three are in my opinion the standouts i will say jason bateman was great and again ben affleck was awesome too so was the guy that played peter falk really it's everybody even the secretaries i was just like yeah buy it you know what i mean like it was just really cool overly pretty i don't buy that <laughs> that was very convenient no that's how they wanted their secretaries then so you think that that was real i think that was like on purpose oh really yeah hmm. only because and i worked at like a very old school company mm -hmm. prior to leaving a typical workforce but i was hired because oh, okay. i was no okay. i got told I'm just with you. shut up I did, I did marry you. And then I also had one of like the head guys compliment me for wearing skirts and dresses to yeah. work because the other girls in the office didn't. And it's he an was, old school it thing. Was, yeah, it was a thing. And I was just like, well, now this is gross. <laughs> well, so I didn't think of it that way. I just thought they're too pretty to be secretaries, but maybe not. No, I I've think never it had was one. on purpose. Okay, well, that's cool. Accurate for the times. I guess that's another thing. They were very accurate. This is not actually a no, this is a side tangent, but they were super accurate as far as like the depiction of everything from again the bag labels like the doritos or the 7-eleven logo yeah like the way that the slushy even looked you know like the the slurpee like i was like wow they, they're, they're really runny now mm -hmm. you know like back then it was thick and full of chemicals and so yeah so it's just really weird one of the greatest quotes uh that i thought came out of the movie was a shoe is always just a shoe until someone steps into it and I, I just thought that that was amazing that's one of the things that i love about footwear in general is not only when i see something Something like that in a specific colorway like something that MJ wore or something that he uh, you know won a championship in or whatever it might be those moments and those memories are automatically now tied to those pieces of footwear which makes them more of a monument than really anything else and it sounds interesting or weird to say that just because it is a piece of footwear it's a piece of sporting equipment you know what I mean so like it really shouldn't be that coveted or whatever but it really is for some people and I'm one of those people and that's also how I like to look at my pieces of footwear too is that when I see a pair of shoes it's not just a pair of shoes to me you know what i mean like it's it's like a memory and there's lots of memories in there it's almost like when you look at your own tattoos you can kind of like remember where you were and the feelings that you had when you got them and i'm not talking about pain i'm talking about like your mindset and stuff like that it's just very strange when you smell something smell is a trigger for a memory that's why i smell the shoes because that's a trigger it's not just because i like the new shoe smell even though i do it's more nuanced than than just the dumb shit. 
that we do sometimes. Something that I thought was really awesome is that they showed you the pitches between all the brands, uh, pitching their brand to MJ and his family, and something that we've actually talked about, a lot of things that we've talked about on this channel over the past 14 years were in this movie, which I think is just really, really cool, just as somebody that talks about it all the time. But the Adidas Forum was front and center in that Adidas pitch. They had all the colorways. It was cool because that's exactly what I said in that video, where I was like, this could have been the, the Jordan 1, and it really, could have been like that's what they were pushing to him being like yeah we're gonna want you to wear these and uh, I thought that it was really awesome something that I just thought was interesting I had noticed this before but then I had really noticed it during the actual meeting between the family and you know Nike and stuff like that but Nike at the time I don't know if this is you know still current or anything like that but they were one of the first ones or the only ones that was at least depicted on screen that had a black executive so like that must have been I don't want to say like something that maybe pushed them over the edge but it must have been one of those things that where it's like relatable you know what I mean it's like when you can see yourself there. I feel um, like they did a good job depicting that just when he came in for the meeting. Oh no, that, that's for sure. Like Chris Tucker, man, I haven't seen him in sh since like rush hour. Damn! So like seeing him back on screen for me was just really cool. I've loved him since, you know, Friday all the way up to the rush hour movies and stuff like that. I heard that they're doing another one, really cool. But uh, anyways, he, he did a great job. That person is still at the company, which is really dope, like his, his character. And he's in charge of the Jordan brand. So I think that that's really dope as well. I don't always see eye to eye with, you know, the decisions and stuff, but you can't do anything but congratulate him. Like that's really, really cool. But yeah, I just thought it was really interesting that it was obvious, especially because they made the joke about Adolf, which I'm not going to go full into detail and everything, but you guys know Adidas, Germany. It was hilarious being like, oh man, there's a meeting room full of just white people, rich white people on top of that, trying to lure this kid to promote their products. And literally he's just a billboard to them, you know what I mean? And then you had this other company, this startup at the very least, being like, nah, man, you're gonna be the company. And I thought it was cool that really showed how inclusive they were at the time. I, I know that there's, you know, been bumps and stuff like that here or there, but it was cool to see that at the time, at least they were one of the first. This is something very stupid. I'm listening. But uh, I made it as a note anyways, because you don't see Michael Jordan, but you see Michael Jordan. But the way that the person walked was Michael Jordan. I don't know if he studied that. He had that MJ, like young MJ swag. If you've ever watched tape, it was believable. <laughs> like it was weird, even though you knew that that wasn't him, but it was him. And then I will say that the speech that Sonny Vaccaro, I don't know if this was real. I don't know if this was a dramatization for the movie and it was just really well writ written and acted, but like, holy f that was one of the first times that I choked up in the movie. Like I was just like, this guy's, this guy's selling me. That whole speech is literally like how I feel about this stuff. Like if you ever were like, oh, they're just shoes. Why are you so into it? Watch the movie, listen to that speech. It's different for some people. Another thing that was just a game changer that Nike did that they did reluctantly, but it was a real big push from not only MJ's family, but you know, Sonny was part of changing it. And he ended up using that to help change the game for uh, collegiate athletes everywhere. But the percentage of shoe sales where you actually got royalties on top of your shoe deal, where each unit sold, you got a small percentage per sale. And I think that that's really dope. It's something that a, a Q4, Q4 Sports, they're a small shoe company, but that was their pitch to the athletes is that not only do you get a shoe here with us, but you actually share sales and stuff like that, which I thought was really dope. Cause again, at the time that was not a thing. And it's just another thing to add to kind of like the layering of like how much this one person changed the game for everyone. The credits were really, really cool. They ended with the Be Like Mike song. It was awesome. Like that, again, almost cried. I was like, oh, they also added his Hall of Fame speech. Chef's kiss was so good. This is uh, something dumb. It's probably not gonna happen because I, I doubt that they're gonna do another one, but if there was a sequel, this is my pitch. Do the story a couple years later, like fast forward to when MJ was gonna leave them and tell the story on how Tinker kind of came in, saved the day with the Air Jordan 3. And then when you're going from that time frame, jump to where now Jordan is its own brand. I feel like that'd be too hard. Why? Because they were able to do this movie basically without having a face to Michael Jordan. And you wouldn't be able to do that in your idea and then your, I, I think your that, other idea. I, no, I, think that, <laughs> I think that they could. I think that they could. They're creatives, they're storytellers. Tell the story, please. All right, so uh, this is Mrs. Wing and she's the reason why all of our videos look so good. Uh, she edits them and everything. She probably made me sound a little bit more coherent than I actually was during this whole process, but apparently you made notes on my notes. But first, hmm. in a thumbs up, thumbs down, what do you give it? 
I'd give it a thumbs up. Okay. I don't know if I'd want to watch it again, but I did enjoy myself. I always like a good doc. Those are the kinds of podcasts I listen to, like tell me a story and give me like great history. Mm. So this was right up my alley. And if you guys watch this channel, you know that that's up my alley too. So there you go. You want my notes? Well, I, yeah, they, that's, why, <laughs> that's why you're here, man. You need to give your thoughts. My first Can note. Can I read through your no. notes? No. Oh, man. I immediately thought I knew you'd love the intro. Okay. Just because it is everything you love, the music, and then it even came in. So was MTV a part of producing it or was that just a chant into no. the music? Yeah. Okay. Cause yeah, that's they did how a, it starts. They did a great job. When I say love letter, just the intro yeah. it was a love letter to the eighties. Like that was the only thought that I had. And it was filmed so well that it almost looked like they had pulled clips from a bunch of different. Some of it was, which okay. is why, which is why I was saying it almost felt like a YouTube video mm -hmm. where I was like, Hey, I've, I've seen that clip or Hey, I remember that commercial. Mm -hmm. Like they, they used the commercial like where's the beef you already went over actors but the whole reason i wanted to watch this movie was because of jason bateman like i love how this guy talks i love him in ozark i was just like sure jason bateman's there i'll come watch so i will never not think of him and <laughs> was it fingernails or toenails but they were getting pulled off in that show and i don't i don't like that kind of thing yeah, so, yeah i had else. already been watching ozark by myself and then he sat down and watched and he's like what the <laughs> are what you the watching are you watching? So yeah, it was disgusting. Okay, I really wish I could remember what video we went over this. Like you had said, like so much of this we've already covered on this channel, but they went over the Just Do It slogan, mm -hmm. which again is something- I knew, I knew you were gonna like that. <laughs> it was in one of my you, podcasts. Well, and so I brought it to you and then I was like, I'm gonna cover it That's on what I was gonna channel. say is that it's not just that, it's like that was one of her main fun facts in one of the videos. I don't remember which one. I think that's one of the things that I like the most about the movie. This is something I forgot to put in my notes, but they didn't gloss over anything mm -hmm. it was not seeing everything through rose colored glasses or whatever like they talked about who was the king of basketball at the time who were the players that were the kings of basketball at the time how he was perceived as a basketball player and as a draft pick even just the meeting of like oh who are we gonna try to sign and they were they were dismissive about him at mm -hmm. first and none of it felt like oh we better make Nike happy you know what I mean like it, it was not like the last dance where like you could tell yeah that like you know what I mean? It was like one of those things. And so uh, even though I love that docu-series, but like it was definitely one-sided. Mm -hmm. um, and so this was not that. This was as historically accurate as a movie could get. I agree. While still being entertaining and stuff. So I thought how they filmed almost every scene was really great because they did manage to get a guy who very much could have been Michael Jordan's body double. Yo, that, but just even the back. how they would have him move, like they choreographed these scenes like a dance where like so and so's head is just mm -hmm. gonna be blocking. My only scene, do you know what scene bothered me? Which Wayne's brother was that? That was Marlon. Okay, so the scene where Marlon and him are sitting at the bar, they could not keep the camera in. In focus and it wasn't even like they were bouncing it back and forth depending on who was talking it was just like did you put the lens on autofocus and just say are you sure that it wasn't because he kept moving because that's how he talks like, no like even when Matt like, Damon was talking it wouldn't stay in focus on him I wonder if maybe that was just the visual look because like I said, like it didn't look like a new movie. Like when we do like an 80s vibe, like a real short or even just a clip in the videos and stuff like that, I drop, drag and drop a filter from Final Cut of like an 80s and then you kind of like make the, uh, the look mm -hmm. like strong or light and stuff like that. So it kind of had that like look to it without looking I don't you know, because uh, everything else was done so well. Everything was, although some of them were really tight, but I was like, oh, okay, we're I, really supposed to feel yeah, Matt Damon's I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> right that, here. That was the scene that I was picturing. <laughs> it was when he was talking to his mom. Yes, and it's just. Yeah, it was just the face. Yeah. And I was like, he's got an unfortunate beard structure, which mm. is probably why he doesn't have one. And you know what I mean? So yeah, it was like, you could see the pores and stuff. Yes. I thought that with like certain shots with Viola Davis too. Mm. I was like, your skin is flawless, but I could see that you're still human. Yes. You know what I mean? So like it was just, it was nice. Okay. You already went over it, but I really liked how they depicted Phil Knight as this like crunchy hippie with his shoes off all the time and then his like mantras. He was so weird because it was like he couldn't balance himself. 
But at the same time, and I'm thinking this as I'm watching it, I'm like, it's a beautiful purple Porsche. That does not go with hippies. And then when Matt Damon or Sonny called him out on it, I was just like, thank you. Somebody needed to say what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, I, I just love that he talked specifically about the color of his Porsche mm. and how that it was so many coats of paint to make it this grape color. And he thought that the name was meh. And I was just like, but there's an Air Jordan 5 grape. My last note, and that's only, it was more so because you had picked it out on the trailer, but the scene where they show the shot the of the shoes inside of the, the, the glass case. cases, yeah. Did you notice they shortened it by a lot well, so that you couldn't actually focus on the fact that, what was it, an eBay tag? It was an eBay authentication tag. They removed it digitally, but they did not remove the green wire thing that they used to attach it. So that was still there, but the little round disc that comes on the shoes was not there. I just feel like in the trailer, it was like this slow pan and like you could have blinked in the movie and you would have missed it being on screen. It's just funny because they literally took the time to go digitally remove it because that someone screenshot of that from the trailer mm -hmm. and then it went all over like you know sneaker twitter i was wondering as we were like either that scene would be cut like that frame yeah. or did they fix that and that was the thing they, they did fix it they just didn't go all out because i don't know how well it would have or how easy it would have been to like follow yeah because this is not a special effects movie yeah. we got to pay an effects guy to remove that thing because one person that was part of the set missed it. They were probably trying to send it back to eBay when they were done. There's no returns. None? No, no returns, no exchanges. Really? I'm pretty sure. Oh. I could I could be wrong. I'm just joking. But like I, it already went through authentication. Yeah, so like, you know, but either way, some of the stuff that's on that set, like those shoes, I bet you they're just part of his, like, Ben Affleck's collection now. Probably. Because he's like one of those kind of guys too. Like, he's like, like this, but with like comics. And so I wouldn't be surprised if he was also kind of like this, but with shoes too or maybe sports memorabilia maybe he's got a basement with a cool pool table and like a bar or something and he's got like shoes somewhere like i don't know but that's what i like to <laughs> think he probably doesn't have a bar right now oh that's right sorry <laughs> my bad that was insensitive of me. <laughs> anyways i had a fun work day like we got to do something a little bit different yeah no i mean this is fun to do in general because i love talking about shoes but it does get hard to talk about the same shoe all the time. I don't even know if I do it well, but you guys stick around to watch, so thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. But um, yeah, let us know what you think about the movie down below in the comment section. I thought it was fantastic. It's a fun time at the movies that was different than the superhero thing, because that's really the only movie that I go watch. Well. Today, for our second movie, we're going to go watch Mario Brothers. Which is not a comic book movie, but that's still, that's that's my kind of movie, so. There will be no follow-up review. Uh, no, no, we don't. <laughs> we, don't, we don't do that. I still think the sequel idea is great, though. I just don't know how they pull it off. They would have to find somebody, like, I don't even know, did they use, like, a taped voice for his hello? Yeah, because that sounded like MJ. Yeah, so, I just, I don't know. I don't know how they do it. Just like they did. No. Yeah. It was only because his mom was such a central part to, like, she was the one who was pulling the deals and... You don't think she was still doing that two years later? He <sighs> thanked her in the Hall of Fame speech. Yeah, but that's because good kids love their moms. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, like, it's, like... If there's a sequel, call it like Air Jordan. Air Bud 2. No. <laughs> no. But call it Air Jordan instead of just Air and talk about how they almost lost the guy <laughs> two years later and uh, how. Losing Air. No. <laughs> just, just Air we Jordan. We got a flat. Just Air Jordan. <laughs> and uh, and then, you know, go from there and then fast forward to see how he was not just maintained the face of the brand, but like that shoe. Ooh. Oh my, oh my gosh, God. that was awful. But uh, you know, this shoe that was introduced in 1985 is still being purchased today, like in mass quantities. So, and I know that there are shoes that do that, like Converse and you know, Adidas and stuff like that, Puma, but those are brands, this is a man. Great movie, I loved it. Uh, I thought it was awesome, you liked it. I liked it. Liked it, loved it. I liked it. Okay, definitely go see it if you haven't yet, or if you haven't yet. Uh, Sorry, I, would, I did warn you. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. We will catch you on the next shoe review, which is probably these. And uh, with that being said, we'll see you later.